but genuinely sought to improve on what there was. And in 3D, you gotta have more moves than strike, parry, and move towards or away from your enemy. What they did was give us this fake out, psych out kind of move where you can pretend to be starting to strike in one direction and then when the enemy tries to parry that blow you instantly switch over to the other direction. You can also control if your blow should come from the side or up and downwards. However, it's utterly pointless because you can win a fight just by wailing on your opponent. That would never have worked in the first two. I mean up to and including the last fight, the boss battle. You don't need skill to do well at the fence. Now that in itself is not necessarily a bad thing. I mean, if that was what they were going for. A lot of games that give you a sword or blade or whatever do go for just hack and slash. But this didn't. This was clearly genuinely trying to improve on the system and it fails because, well, the AI is crap. That goes for most of the battles anyway. I think it was also the wrong decision to have the camera switch to the 2D side view when you do enter combat. It's again just trying to attract us by way of nostalgia. It's like, come on, you liked this a couple of years ago, now it's in 3D. 3D helps some things. 3D games is certainly a good thing. Unless your name is Sonic, but you have to change something. You can't just translate a game straight from 2D to 3D. I haven't played the original Duke Nukem, but I understand that it was basically an action platform game. Duke Nukem 3D is not. It's a straight first person shooter. They took what they had and they adapted it because 3D is different. It is also unfortunate that this, with the 3D being so early, really doesn't look that good. It's the ugliest looking of all six games. You know, when a new technology comes around, there will be that early period where someone says, this is awesome, it's never going to get any better than this, let's just roll with it instead of admitting that there are some limitations. It's like when you watch Lawnmower Man. Back then, I'm sure people thought, at least the producers, that this was amazing looking. Today, not so much. And that doesn't have to be the case. I can mention old movies where the effects still hold up. I recently watched the 1939 version of The Hunchback of Notre Dame. With a few exceptions, it did hold up. That's because some people do understand that this looks good to a point, and after that you have to hide it. Think of Jaws. They don't constantly show you the shark because it's crap looking. Anyway, this does take you to some very nice locations. You make your way through a hot air balloon and you find yourself both very far down, in fact, in the city's sewers at one point, and very high up in some ruins in the sky. And don't ask me how they're floating. I guess it's magic. Most of what you fight is basically humanoid. There's one or two exceptions. The game is also quite buggy. I mean, I never had to start over from the beginning in this game. I seem to sometimes need to load a file several times for these blocks that need to be moving to be moving, but it just isn't that tightly programmed. Something that is nice is that you, for the first time, get a choice of weapons. And I suppose you could say, really, of these six, the most choice of weapons. The biggest difference is that this actually gives you a bow and arrow. And you use it here and there. It's a pretty nice addition. And some enemies also use bow and arrow. Something that's nice is that you can now also use 
magic with this bow and arrow. Like distracting someone by firing an arrow that unleashes a swarm of insects, stuff like that. I honestly never use them all that much. Then you have your trusty sword, and you have these two small blades that are kind of like knives, and they're very short range, but also the fastest weapon. And finally, the staff, which is the longest range weapon and also the slowest. The sword is, of course, the hat. I will say that these new weapons are pretty good addition. I've used all four and enjoyed them. You can also chain attacks, and obviously the one you can chain the most attacks with are the dual blades. The middle one is the sword, and the one you can chain the least with is the staff. Another area where this clings too much to our memories of the first two, the potions. You again have potions of life. If you find a specific potion, you'll get some more life potions. Some potions are magical and thus required for you to get further. I didn't have a problem with this aspect of the first two, but at some point you just gotta cut and let it be its own thing. The fact of the matter is, if the first of these games that you play is Prince of Persia 3D, it won't really grab you as anything because all over it are all of these references to fond memories of the first two. And they won't have any effect on someone who's new to it. And when you do an adaptation, it really is the best thing to let it be its own thing somewhat also. You know, don't start out by alienating everyone who doesn't already know what it's about. And honestly, as a fan of the first one, it is a little embarrassing. It's like accidentally stumbling upon a shrine devoted to something that you might yourself like. You know, it almost has that kind of thing of... Crap. Am I really this obnoxiously into this game or person or whatever? It isn't all bad. The very last level can be pretty fun. And some of the puzzles and traps along the way can be as well. But overall, unless you are dying to see a nostalgic 3D homage to the first two, go ahead and skip this one. These require a great deal of concentration, coordination, and timing. If you step on a pressure plate, a door might open, and then you have to make sure to get through that door before it closes again. Now, these first three really have this very present sense of risk and danger. You feel like at any moment the floor could collapse under you, the tile you're about to run over, or just around the corner a really tough enemy or a new terrifying trap that you have to time your way through will appear. Also from this one, i.e. Prince of Persia 3D, and onwards you can barely ever hear what anyone says in cinematics. And that brings us to the new Prince of Persia trilogy. I'll make some additions to my comments about the concept now because with these three it changes a bit, but first I must say, if Ubisoft was a woman, I would marry her. If she was a country, I'd go there and move there, spend the rest of my life there. If she was a planet, I would find some way to disprove Einstein, invent feasible interplanetary travel, and I would make that planet my home. I love Ubisoft. Ubisoft has given me so many wonderful times with games. From Rayman, although that one admittedly did frustrate me quite a bit, through almost everything they've made, really. This Prince of Persia trilogy, the game 13, yes, the comic's better, but when isn't the source material better? The TMNT game, one of the two exceptions to the rule that licensed games always suck, the other being Aladdin. Red Steel was okay, I guess. I still say that Samurai Warriors Katana is more fun if you want a good motion sensor fencing game. The Splinter Cell franchise, honestly, my fitness coach cardio workout is 
more or less the only time they've really let me down. And that game is okay.